so yeah so we saw x-ray generation we saw what happens how it interacts with cells in the body and if you see uh, the x-ray that is emitting over here there is some attenuation that takes place so this attenuation is responsible for the image if there is more attenuation that will result in a dark spot if there is less attenuation that will result in a bright spot so how do we quantify attenuation so here is the measure so this is very important because linear attenuation coefficient is the term or is the um, what do we say it is it is that thing by which or concept by which you get the x-ray because th this is the concept if if there is more attenuation there is a dark spot if there is less attenuation there is a bright spot so because we have different elements in our body and based on uh, what happens uh, we get the image so linear att attenuation coefficient so the fraction of photons removed from a mono energetic beam so a mono energetic beam means a beam with only one uh, energy of electrons uh, of photons sorry so this is photons x-ray so only one let's say only 100 kilo electron volts energy photons are there so that is what is called as mono uh, energetic beam mono means one energetic energy uh, so what happens is the number of or the fraction of photons that are removed uh, of x-rays or gamma rays per unit thickness of the material is called linear attenuation coefficient and it is given by this formula so what it basically is can be understood from this example let's say there are a thousand photons that are incident on this slab of tissue let's say so let's say this is a tissue which has a thickness of one centimeter and there are a thousand photons that are incident on this now when these photons interact with these cells or with these atoms over here there will be photoelectric effect that takes place there will be Compton scattering there will be a little bit of Rayleigh scattering and so on so the amount of electro uh, the amount of photons that come out will be less so will be like so in this case applying the formula will be about 852 so the amount of photons that come out is this n the amount of photons that come in is n naught and mu is what is the linear attenuation coefficient this linear attenuation coefficient is different for different elements so for bone this has a different value for skin it has a different value and so on so hence the number of photons that is emitted is different for different regions in the body and that causes the increase or decrease uh, of x-ray uh, intensity so yeah so the fraction so this is this is this is what is linear attenuation coefficient am i clear so that's mu and mu is different for every element and because of this different amount of photons will uh, get i mean different amount of photons will come out and that will be detected by the detector if there are more photons there will be a bright spot if there are less photons there will be a dark spot and that is how the image is created again notice the uh, length is also important so if this is one centimeter there is 852 photons but if let's say there, are, there was a slab of six centimeters then you will put that over here x is the distance of the slab or the thickness so that will also 
uh, determine uh, the number of photons exiting. How do you get the value of mu or linear uh, linear attenuation coefficient mu? So that is just the sum of the linear attenuation coefficient that is that can be caused by the different effects that we just studied and for tissue soft tissue this ranges from about 0.35 to 0.16 oh this is centimeter inverse oh this is a typo here this is centimeter inverse so the units of linear attenuation coefficient is centimeter inverse and yeah so linear attenuation coefficient is also dependent on density so if you see let's say there is ice water and steam it is known that water has the highest density so there are more atoms or molecules that are crowded in uh, a given unit of space as compared to ice and as compared to steam so the steam has the lowest density water has the highest density and ice is somewhere in the middle so because of this density what happens is the linear attenuation coefficient of water is greater that makes sense right if there is more density it will be more attenuated the x-rays will be more attenuated so hence the linear coefficient uh, the linear attenuation coefficient of water is higher as compared to that of ice and as compared to that of water vapor so sometimes this becomes a problem because the thing that we are studying is the same the molecules are the same h2o but the uh, linear attenuation coefficient is different so there is something called as mass attenuation coefficient that was introduced because uh, so we, we, we just normalize the linear attenuation coefficient with the density of the material and so now the mass attenuation coefficient for water ice and water vapor is the same because we have divided it with density so mass attenuation coefficient is nothing but linear attenuation coefficient divided by density of the material so over here there is a graph of energy again energy of the incident photon at the x-axis and mass attenuation coefficient on the y-axis uh, and this is the diagnostic range in blue so here we can see uh, the Rayleigh photoelectric and Compton scattering so the green one is Compton red is Rayleigh and uh, this yellow one is pair uh, is photoelectric the yellow one is photoelectric and this one this is I guess orange this is pair production so pair production is no way no way in the diagnostic range hence we don't study that usually these three are mostly studied and uh, this is only for soft tissue so for soft tissue we can see uh, depending on how much energy is supplied for the incident uh, how much energy of the incident photon is supplied it can either be photoelectric effect or be Compton scattering that is uh, that is competing and this one is the total so yeah so that is how the mass attenuation coefficient varies uh, as 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 a function of energy